for the Excellent. minutes of the last meeting. I make a motion we approve as presented. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Gary? Mm -hmm. Yes, he just told me about that. Yeah, if it isn't him, we forget you. So. Yeah, I'm invisible. <laughs> Under the ambulance, Not really. ambulance presentation. <laughs> you ready for us? Sure. Well, good evening. Uh, I'm David Zamoyski. We have Gary Ponce and Tim Drumgoal. Uh, we're part of the uh, new committee for the new truck. Uh, we're missing AJ, who's... Oh, Alicia's Ronnie's in the back. She just gets. She's just there. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> um, we are... Whittled <laughs> down after many yeah. months of negotiating <clears throat> and figuring out a new ambulance. I was just... Um, yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Copy this back? Sure. Thanks. Sir. So... We have looked at many trucks. Many um, miles of travel. Many miles of travel. And this is the truck that we've decided on for multiple reasons. Can you back? Okay, going to share or you want? I'll you share. Want to share. I mean, if you have extra, that's fine, but <clears throat> I'm all about conservation. Okay. Um, so, five minutes? Are you for the way? We will say that this was run for on town paper. So. Yes, it was. <laughs> uh, quick background. So the this truck committee was assembled out of um, current staff members at South County EMS, uh, both experienced inspecting trucks and inexperienced inspecting trucks, and a wide breadth of experience in EMS um, to come up with something. And they were tasked with coming up with something that was um, uh, chiefly concerned with the safety of the staff and the patients and, and making that um, that decision from there. So. Right. so with that, what we've done is we found a vendor to build a truck that we were really interested in um, for the safety points. Um, at one point, the, let's see, the truck we're looking at, we had one in 2002 um, made by the same company. And the reason that we did not go back with them for the next truck was that we've had some issues with the dealer. We have a new dealer now that's dealing with this. Uh, we did a lot of research on the dealer, and the dealer seems to be um, very well versed. Um, no complaints about their part of the deal. Um, so what we're looking at is what is called the Medic Ready truck. Um, in here, it is designed for us to sit down and do all our work sitting. Um, everything is at a reach. So I can, we can reach here, we can reach here. Our monitor is right here, our radios are right here. You don't have to get up. You all should be wearing a six point harness uh, to keep you in place. Okay. Um, so there's harnesses on every seat in the truck. Um, we're adding what is called um, a speaker auto lift for our cot. Um, our cots now are battery operated so they lift up. The only thing we have to do is now lift the patient into the truck. Um, in the next few years, you'll find the state mandating having an auto lift in the back of the truck. So basically it takes the cot and lifts it up and both puts it right in the truck for us so we don't have to lift anymore. Um, what else do we have? Um, Suspension. What? The suspension. suspension. Uh, we have what is on the truck we have now is Air Ride. Uh, we've had some issues with airbags in it. Uh, they've come out in the past couple of years of something called a, um, it's an air hydraulic system. So the ride is much better, quieter, much more stable ride. The truck will lower down for us also hydraulically. So now we have more room to get someone in and out. Um, and the other thing that we're looking at is that we have the ability of getting a 2016 chassis over a 2017 chassis, which will save us about six grand. Um, the chassis will be four wheel drive because that is what they have um, 
in stock at the moment. We will we'll get the you know pleasure of having a truck that is four wheel drive to use in the areas of like Waitley and that now. Um, beefier suspension on it. Um, over the 17 truck, which we'd, we'd end up with a two wheel drive truck just because it's that much more money. We're looking at almost seven grand per difference in the price. So that's what we're looking at. Um, so David, on, on this kind of um, truck, is there extra maintenance cost or extra <coughs> Cost associated with the four wheel drive versus the no, there shouldn't be. Um, okay. It's a pretty simple Ford front end. Um, so, no, there shouldn't be. Um, it's a pretty solid front end on the truck. Um, you can have it, Gary. What kind of warranty do you got on the The paint sure. will be the let's see, electronics. Lifetime. Yeah, our lifetime. lifetime the paint has a 10-year warranty the truck is itself is three years and 36,000 miles the box is uh, also the box it the, the, the box the quality of the box is lifetime also so in the past we've had the e-series Fords then Deerfoot went with the international this is the F-Series Ford chassis? F-Series, right. So it's what, like a pickup truck. Okay, what's the reason why you selected <coughs> that versus other manufacturers or um, other styles? Used to be common, like the Sunderland and Waitley truck are on a Ford van. They were diesel. You can't get a diesel anymore in that chassis. They don't make that chassis anymore. Um, the reason we went with Ford, we have a good dealer in the neighborhood that'll take care of us over, uh, say, a Dodge. Um, Plus, you can't get Dodge service. Um, they don't have the it's not all their service centers will do it. So, so you know, being a bigger truck, um, there are other chassis out there like the Mercedes, but the price is way out of line for us to afford. Um, the Mercedes is very expensive to buy. The Fords are being utilized pretty widely uh, in Massachusetts as a standard uh, by a lot of the fire departments, a lot of the uh, private services. Um, basically, they've been a, a, a rock hard truck. Um, we're looking for something that's going to, no matter what we do, we're going to beat these trucks up. Mm -hmm. That's just the nature of the business. Um, the Dodges are not a bad product, but they've had some uh, performance issues into the 50,000 mile range that we really don't want to address. Mm -hmm. And with not having any local Dodge to get to work on them, that's, that's a significant issue. Um, the new dealer is about an hour away in Connecticut. They have a 24 hour service that will come out and meet us on the road if we break down. Um, they're a very strong service-oriented business. They've been in business about, what, 35 years? Yeah, 35 years. Um, so you're saying that any Ford dealer would service that truck? They absolutely would service uh, the Ford. We're, We're talking, talking about the truck right. itself. So right. the, the truck itself, most Ford dealers <laughs> would service the truck. But when you get past the truck body, yeah. past the engine and the cab, yeah. that's all custom. Sure from their back, you're not counting this, some of the suspension parts and the wheels and that type of thing. So anything that would go wrong in that box, electronic, electric, or the box integrity would be dealt with at the dealer. Mm -hmm. So it's the manufacturer of the truck you're talking about? The, man, the, the servicing the, dealer for the, the outfitter the of the truck, yeah. yeah. The, other, the other reason we went with this truck is that the electronics on that truck are all manual switches with relays. So if we have a problem with the switch, it's plug and play, a realized plug and play. Um, some of the other truck manufacturers like Horton uses a electronic board. So if you have a problem, you have to replace a $4,000 board. Um, this is all plug and play. Um, so if there's a problem, you walk over, you pull out this, and there's a spare one. You put it in, continue to march. To come back to some of the, uh, the safety initiatives, um, David touched on some of the safety issues as far as the cop goes. Uh, the whole cop industry has changed uh, significantly, and I know some of you guys that are up there know about the striker stretcher. Basically, the striker stretcher uh, has pretty much taken over here, 
and what they've developed is a uh, NFPA compliant mounting and lifting device. It will be mandated in the next two years. It doesn't make sense for us to build a truck without that. Uh, and basically the cost of this is about one third of the average back injury. So it's not rocket science to do that. Um, the suspension, I just wanted to touch on that a little bit. It's actually a liquid piston, not air. So it's a liquid system, um, not a bag system in any way, shape, or form. There's nothing really that can leak in this thing. Um, so probably the best ride I've ever seen in a truck. I've been in the business for 30 years, and there's not, I've not seen anything like this. Their fluid system, something new that just come out? Or it's you know? about three years three old years. now. Uh, I first saw it in Vegas about three years ago at the National Convention. So. And it's kind of like people it's, that are it's making taken over bags are, are going out of business because of this. Yeah. It's taken over the uh, suspension systems, not only in our trucks, but in a lot of delivery vehicles and that kind of thing. <coughs> <coughs> Could, could you comment on uh, gasoline versus diesel? Wear and tear. Um, the amount of idle time that we have over is, you know, cost of maintenance is just cheaper on the diesel. And the years of service we'll get out of the diesel over the gas. Um, gas mileage in a gas version is probably four or five, and we'll get like 12 or 13 maybe. Uh, with the same size truck. Yeah, I think that particular truck is about 10, yeah, uh, 10 to 11. Um, the gasoline engines just don't handle the island like the, the diesels. So that's that's, that's always been the reason why they, well, there's other reasons why they moved from gas to diesel. It had to do with ambulances catching on fire in the 80s. It was a bad thing. It used to be mandated that it was B diesel. Right, B diesel, yeah. Right. And until, I think... Uh, until Ford stopped making diesel and yeah. 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 yeah, five years ago. Yeah. 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 Um, when they stopped making the uh, uh, F450 <coughs> diesel, they started lightening up on those rules a little bit. Um, it really boils down to the amount of idling that goes on in these trucks tears them to pieces. Uh, a diesel is designed to idle, a gasoline engine is not. So your, your overall maintenance may be very close in the long run, but your overall performance is going to be considerably better. Questions for us? I, I just like the diesel because worse comes to worse. You, if you have no gas pumps available to you, you're out, running out of gas, you can always go up to your uh, oil tank and fill That's up right. your oil tank. Put it under your house. <laughs> I, 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 it, you can do that about three different. times until the catalytic converter plugs right. up and you don't have enough yeah. death fluid in it. And then it, the, the truck won't go over 500 RPMs until that thing's rebuilt. So, you know, I, I mean, the diesels, they have their place, but they're very expensive to maintain. A catalytic conversion, those things can be upwards of three thousand dollars to clean out if you don't replace them. And I mean, I don't know. I had a motorhome with a 460 gas one. I always got 11 miles, so now yeah. I'm putting 180 thousand miles on it. Never had to get to trouble, but I'm not advocating for one or the other. I'm just saying, what's the cost of this? Um, we're on. We're actually on on our target budget. We we'd set a number. Uh, we're at two sixty eight five. Um, and that number hopefully will drop a little more because we haven't put a total final pencil to it yet. So there's just some tweaking we still need to do. So it'll, it'll be in that range. Is Which is also with a $50,000 lift that in that price, and it's which right. turns out to be less money than your last year once you right. Well, and we had originally thought that the price when we when we uh, raised and allocated the capital for the ambulance replacement, you know, we went out, we sent our feelers out, and we're like, you know, what's a chassis going to cost? What's this going to cost? And we were thinking closer to 300. Yeah. So the fact that you've come in at that amount um, 
you know, with with the things like the cloud and the harness system and stuff like that, I think is is pretty remarkable. I mean, it sounds like a lot of money, um, but considering you know where we're going, you know, we're, we were told think three hundred yeah. um, that they were able to find that for that. So, I just have a question on the procurement process. Okay, um, how are you going to procure the truck? Is it going to be a state on the state bid list? Uh, we're using actually what is the um, it's a Texas bid list, uh, which is same as the Mass State bid list, but they charge us less money. It's a thousand dollar flat. Um, it's like H A B A C or something like that. Is the it's a municipal bid. county bid. yeah bid, um, but and it's fine with Massachusetts. It's law. fine. It's all within legal where the state of Massachusetts bid list would charge us one and a half percent. Yeah. Um, so it's a thousand dollar flat. So we'll save three grand there. But um, it's acceptable with the attorney general. Yes. At, at the risk of being the guy who gets laughed at. No. That's Since my the, turn. I know. Since the idling is such a big deal, why has why hasn't there been any any company looking at the possibility of, of developing a hybrid? Because they sit. I mean, they oh, they yeah, idle. Well. It makes sense. That's what they do, but it doesn't exist, is what I'm hearing. Not, not <coughs> sort of vehicle yet. Not yet. But it'd be nice. It's coming. Yeah. Um, Strangely enough, enough. I, I, I saw a Hyundai concept vehicle, uh, which would almost meet our weight requirements, but that's about five years out. Okay. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. It's it's about money and fuel alone and uh, probably maintenance. Hydrogen okay. brand vehicles. Same, yeah. 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 That's. Are, are a big thing right now and something that they're working to develop. Uh, and invest in the charging mm -hmm. station. Yeah. Um, hydrogen, they don't have enough filling stations. Right. right. But you have to invest in your own. And that's but, if you, but if you look at our business, we're really in a, we're, we're regionally locked for the most part, uh, especially with the uh, primary truck. Um, so, you know, in the, in the future, that's something that we could really investigate. You could your own. Yeah. Did you, was there some sort of, um, Climate control system that works off of shore power. Did yeah, was that uh, looked at? One of the uh, one of the uh, interesting things that they have added to these trucks is a separate climate control system. Uh, if any of you guys uh, who have been ambulance directors know, uh, the air conditioning goes out on these trucks on a pretty regular basis, um, and it's because it's getting beat up from both ends. It's it's over, it's working to cool and heat a much larger area than it's really designed to do. And then for years they um, stuck with working off of the engine. The, the, these trucks actually have a separate unit that's mounted. Um, it actually works off the shore on line to both heat and air condition the truck um, and keeps the truck at a standard temperature, which is another uh, consideration when you're looking at thousands of dollars worth of medications. Um, and equipment that uh, I don't know if any of you guys have ever been put on a cold piece of equipment in the winter. It's really not that much fun. Um, you know, it's it's uh, an interesting uh, design that they've come up with. It's pretty common in the Southwest. Haven't seen it here, but it's it's pretty routine for them. With the uh, can you get a couple more chairs up for the uh, people that are standing? Come on in, join the party. Only me, just two. I got one. Nice one. David, with the uh, lifetime warranty on the chassis, is it possible that in the next ambulance you won't, you won't be replacing the whole thing? That's actually uh, a huge benefit of PO Custom. Uh, the outfitter is they, they have a huge business in. Uh, mm -hmm. retrofitting the boxes uh, in six or seven years I don't know what the lifetime of the truck needs to be but we'll use that number you can take that box off of that and put it on a new chassis well, your rate um, of 140,000 miles you're going to be looking at six to eight years yeah, yeah. but I mean, is there something we can be doing with the vehicle we have now to make the vehicle we that? actually investigated that um, and it's very difficult to remount the, the, the uh, box. We had. That it, box. It just yeah. wasn't designed to do that. Mm -hmm. How many miles on the international right now? 
113,000. Yeah. And that's a 2010. 2010, model. right. So seven years. Yeah. You're hitting the end of his life. But yeah. It's a little lot easier to read. Yeah. Right. He's about, about 60% of a new ambulance. And we, and we really, really looked at that hard and went through their, their mount, remounting process and designed this box so that it will actually be something that's useful mm -hmm. right. in six or seven years. Um, I've been in the back of ambulances since 1984. This is the best designed ambulance I've seen and it's about the 20th ambulance I've worked on to design. Um, I don't have to move once I get into that truck more than three feet in any direction ever to get everything I need. And I rarely have to be unbuckled. And when we see injuries in emergency medical services because of accidents or things like that, it's because the crew members are being tossed around the ambulance because they're almost not buckled in, in or equipment is striking them, right? So the fact, and right now we're encouraged not to buckle in because of the way ambulances are designed. We're always surfing and reaching for radios and stuff like that. So, for example, the last heart attack patient I've had in Springfield, I stood up seven times in the back of the truck. Just to get equipment that's not in my arm's reach, unbuckle the seatbelt, walk right. to the side of the truck, grab it, and sit down. So, Based on these traditional designs exactly. and ambulances, yeah. right? And mind you, that is working very, very hard to get the stuff to, as close as we can. Sure. That's it's just the way the truck was designed uh, five years ago. It's a very well-designed truck for five years ago, but it just doesn't meet the safety level that, that we felt needs to happen here. So are you uh, specifying a Ford uh, F450? Yes. So you have to justify sole source for that particular? Yes. Yeah. Product, okay. Yeah. Well, they're not, they're yeah. not bidding it. No, they're we're buying not bidding it. They're buying it off a bid list. We're buying it off a bid list. Right, but you, you, they're gonna specify a Ford F450, not a vehicle that meets the Ford F50 requirements. That, that, is, that, is, that is the spec for the ambulance itself, yes. Right, but you could get other manufacturers that would meet the same specs as the Ford. We're buying off the same bid list, so we don't have to go to the You're not spec right. to bidding. Oh, okay. Yeah, could you look at other, yes. other manufacturers? Absolutely, and we did. Um, my, my, my professional opinion uh, was really garnered from talking to probably uh, 10 or 15 different companies and, and fire departments and seeing how they were getting along with these trucks. Um, they're a solid rock hard truck. That's that's the bottom line with this. Do other um, agencies in the area have, have like Amherst or Northampton? Amherst exactly has. Yeah. They have the, Amherst has the 450 on the front end, correct? Yeah. yeah, they have the exact same front end, and they have no quorums with it compared to the current international front end, which almost every service that has it has a whole list of complaints. So that was one of the huge factors. One of our part-timers who works for Amherst Fire, has, he's a huge fan of the Ford front end. This is great. I, I, I don't see any reason to, 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 to continue to spend this conversation much longer. Yeah. Bruce, you got one more question? Uh, I just had two quick ones. One, is the trade-in value included in the yes. price? And does the, as the fiscal rep, does the, do you have any review or a process that you have to go through from the town of Deerfield? Um, they'll, they'll recommend us to us and then we'll vote on it. Okay. So the vehicle you traded in was an older Ford? It's, um, it's uh, 17 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Is it the one that was from Waitley? The Waitley truck, truck, yes. Okay. Um, Which happens to be the second on ambulance right now because our international is in the shop again. It's the it's just the Ford and is still running for yeah. Strong. Yeah. 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 I rest my case. I, I, mean, so I to be honest with you, I never worked on uh, international before. I, I wouldn't buy one again. <laughs> Not for an ambulance. It just. Um, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Motion. Make a, oh well, no, we won't. Second? Yeah. Discussion? What are you going to, what's our, what's what's our motion? Motion, yeah. motion yeah. to, to allow them to buy it, right? Allow them to purchase an ambulance. 
Well, I, think, I, I, think, I think the motion would be that we recommend to the uh, fiscal agent to, uh, to uh, accept the recommendation of the uh, ambulance. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations. I, I, I just want to thank the committee. Yeah. I, you were extremely diligent and worked fast and crossed all your teeth and all your eyes. And I sat in a couple of your meetings and was very impressed with everything. And, um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do you want to still come to you as far as the town of Deerfield for approval? Or? Um, We're going to send all the process over to them yeah, so they just, can. We just, we have this. You don't need to forward you it. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. You just need to have. We just need to put it on our agenda for the next meeting. Okay. Yeah. I would also offer that you uh, offer the old one to Gary Stone because I think he has a lot of something <laughs> <laughs> to old ones. I think he's driven at probably half the mile, or three quarters of the mile that's on. She's it. still an old, good old girl. She's still, she's still running she's calls. She's still running calls. So. Yeah. I drove yeah. it the other day. It still works for me. I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of that. We almost didn't <laughs> save it. <laughs> so we'll get that all to you. Um, Our next meeting is October 5th. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Much, guys. Thank you very much. Next on the agenda, housing of South County Amos. Can you do what with it? Also, do you have anything? that many copies of this but I'll show you in different areas, but it kind of represents um, all of the things that was initially listed as what they wanted uh, and how it would be uh, best suited for the vehicles and stuff. Um, the garage is uh, 40 feet deep, and it does have two bunk rooms, three offices, and two bathrooms with uh, showers and stuff like that. Zach, how, how deep did you want this based on this new, new uh, yeah, that's that, that 40 foot mark. It's yeah. still fine. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That allows full extension of the spectrum. Have you, have you seen this before, Sam? I, I was shown preliminary drawings and came by and I said, I, this looks like what we need for today. I, I think it's like, I forget why I said like 80 or 85% of the way there, and I think. Um, I, it could use some adjustments or some tweaks, and I haven't seen it since. I, is there any, I, the three bays, what would it take to have a fourth bay? I mean, right now, I, I, right now, three bays covers our immediate needs. Um, that doesn't allow for any future growth, any future expansion, anything like that. Um, well, a fourth or fifth bay could be added to the, to the side. But I think the issue at hand is to find a home for the EMS all by itself, mm -hmm. you know, and this meets that. And, you know, although I am aware of the need of possible, you know, future expansion, you know, that's something that could be addressed in the future. This would currently hold the three ambulances that we have and, you know, we could go from there. Yeah. Would you be able to? This is on slab, right? Yeah. This is all going to be on a concrete could, slab. So, so could the concrete slab be poured for 
Well, it could a be fourth done. or fifth. You could do that after the fact. Something like this is very, very simple to do. Everything would be, you know, as great just to continue on. Okay. Yeah, the uh, feet, so well, you know, they have much room. 14 foot. I think, I think that should be fine. With that new stretcher coming off, does it need any more room? Yeah, it's the same as you. Yeah, it's designed to, okay. to be the same to the depth of time. Correct. Um, okay, how much solar is worth what is 36, 3680 or something like that. It's almost uh, 37. Yeah, 3680. How much uh, office? Uh, we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. basically a wood frame building that would have an R22 sidewall insulation and an R50 uh, ceiling insulation. Uh, it would have two separate heating units, one in, if you will, the office area, another separate one for the garage. And uh, currently the furnaces would be uh, propane fire um, gas. Um, it would have a hybrid electric water heater, which is not a big deal, but uh, the energy uh, consumption for a building like this, I think it could be heated for around $3,000 a year and cooled for about the same amount. Do you have radiant heat in the uh, floor for the, the radiant heat? No. Okay. It's just all four side here. Okay. But in this thing, the foundation, it would have to be insulated and the slide would have to be insulated from below as well. <coughs> Yes. I was just wondering how it fits on the footprint of the parcel. It would fit with the front of the bit well, with the overhead doors facing south toward the south of the fire station. It would set approximately 60 feet to the north of the existing parking lot. So that gives an access for a helicopter. What do you call that? That would be an issue when you look at the highway garage in the parcel that the fire district was concerned about. Um, light? Dropping the, uh, the helicopter there. So I think, think their parking lot is yeah, yeah, sufficient. Are, yeah, our, our it's parking, parking lot is sufficient. In the parking lot, as a, as a yeah, space. It's, it's already designated. <laughs> so we went through the RFP process and came up with Waitley as a proposed area. How does this building exist? Um, what? Explain to us how, how how this works. Oh, to get the building? Well, there's, Deerfield has realized the importance of getting this facility um, to the ambulance people. So it, Deerfield's committed to see this happen one of two ways. And uh, I have a, it's not really a police way. It's just something to show a dollar amount. And I'll hand that down so you can kind of see it. Jeff, when you say Deerfield, what do you mean? Town of Deerfield. You guys have discussed this in public meeting? Yes. You yeah. have? When? Except for last night. When? 
just last night. We just said they were interested. We don't always said they were interested. <laughs> Basically, what is I've been working on to get this building um, donated to the town of Deerfield. Yeah, well, um, Trevor, you need one? No, good. We can check. <coughs> Basically, if we can get the the building the way I want to under, I'll, I'll say Agreement A, uh, the monthly cost to South County EMS would be fifteen hundred dollars. Um, and I just put it in as a three-year lease agreement, so I guess that's what municipalities can sign, but, you know, it can be extended forever and always. Um, there'd be no upfront cost, no, no, no other cost to the EMS organization, except for, you know, the utilities, um, the heat, the air conditioning, the water, sewer, electric, phone, or any communications that they would need. Um, I got local approval for this project, but we have to get board of directors approval, which I couldn't get a commitment on as of this evening. So as an option to this is B, if the town of Deerfield had to build this, it's something that we want to do as well. The rate of rent would basically be $3,000 a month if that's the option that we had to you know, fall back on. Uh, once again, there's no upfront cost or anything to the EMS service. This is something Deerfield would do on its own. And, and when you say local approval, I'm, I'm missing I'm missing and board of directors, I'm missing something. To the people that I'm working with to get this donation. So trustees I'm, of I'm, Deerfield Academy. I'm sorry? Trustees of Deerfield Academy. And the local approval is what? The local people. You say you got local approval from the local people at the academy. Like the administration? Yes. And the money would go into a capital account set aside for maintenance and upkeep, you know, that kind of thing. The rent? The rent money would be a separate okay. capital account. And, and what's the construction cost? I don't have this, I don't have an exact dollar in my head. But it really wouldn't matter to the organization because they would have to pay any anyways. And they are aware that they need to pay prevailing wage. And they absolutely have to pay prevailing wage. We're aware of everything we need to do, yeah. No, 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 kid. You have to pay prevailing wage. Well, we understand what to do. You're not saying what I'm saying. There's a lot of things Because I'm you're not. talking two different languages. To, to build the building, you need to pay prevailing wage. We understand. And that has to be very transparent. I understand. If it happens under Agreement A, Deerfield ah. is not going to yes, have anything do. to do with this. Yes, they do. Not if they gift it to the town of Deerfield. If they gift it to the town of Deerfield on Deerfield, on Deerfield land and for, the so and for the construction purposes of a public entity, you have to pay for building wage. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying that Deerfield doesn't because Deerfield's not going to pay for it. I understand that, but I'm saying does the entity know they have to pay for building wage, which is going to add 20 to 25 percent of their cost? I understand. They do. <clears throat> Is Deerfield Academy asking for any commitment in return? It'll be a gift. Is this ambulance service going to be dedicated to them for some way? No. And how have they, how are they approached? Excuse me? How are they approached? I asked them. Have, has the town of Deerfield spent any money on this yet? Not a penny. And when do you expect to get a written I'm not sure. agreement? I'm not sure. A month? Six months? 
I mean, it's important. It's important. It's not a, well, I don't know. I, I don't have an answer to give you, Jonathan. I don't know what you're looking for, but I don't have an answer for that. But what, that's why we talked about this last night. And this is why we got this approach. If we feel that plan A is not going to come to fruition, then we're going to fall back on plan B. One way or the other, we want to get this done and put this to rest. Well, the way the option is still on the table. I never said it wasn't. You know, if we, we can match the dollar amount and everything's fine. Yeah, but, but I don't see it. That's my frustration. I don't see a, a timeline on here. I don't see anything <coughs> written that confirms what you're saying. I don't see anything that, that tells me that in an expeditious way, manner, this is going to happen. I see a, a, a single-sided piece of paper and drawings that are no different than the drawings that we've been very transparent about for, with for two years that the SCAMS board a year ago voted on. My understanding is they rejected it. No, 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 no. A year ago, the skim board said, yes, we're with you guys. A year ago. Never mind the RFP. A year ago. April 2015. We got a letter from the chair of skim's board. And that was, a, that was a vote by the three towns. And I believe it was a unanimous vote. And, and so, if I'm understanding correctly, the current board of selectmen from the town of Deerfield is choosing to turns back on a unanimous vote of SCEMS from, Fred, what was the date again? April of 2015. If, if I'm missing something, let me know. Well, I don't know. I wasn't there. All I understand I do know that. Is that. I read that the Board of Oversight rejected all of the proposals. That was from the RFP. That has nothing to do with the unanimous vote that was taken. Well, why didn't you bring this up a year ago then? Well, we we fought it up many times over the past year, and it's fallen on deaf ears. So what do you want us to do about it? <clears throat> well, I, Mr. Chair, if I may, please. Yes. Um, I, I, I think if we were supposed to have a plan tonight with, with definitive dates. Right, and we don't have um, and, and that I think that's important. I, I think having definitive dates so that we can make make it a thing, make so that we know how we move forward. Um, and and right now, you know, we, we really it, it's difficult. We have option A and option B on the table, but we can't really discuss either option because we don't know what option um, we're looking at right now. Well, that's that's true, but I mean, what's Waitley's option? I mean, do you have a definitive date for when yours is going to be completed? Your choice. You could you could start doing the, the, the work on it tomorrow. But but not, there's nothing that's holding the SCEMS organization up from moving forward tomorrow. There is something the way, no, let, let, me, let me finish again. There is something holding the SCEMS organization from starting tomorrow. We can't start tomorrow. If we were to vote on this, we were to say we want to do this. We couldn't start tomorrow. We don't know when we could start. That's factually accurate. Scams can start tomorrow in Waverly. Do you think it's the right decision? Well, wait a minute. How, how can they start tomorrow? You're going to ask this board to spend money to put an RFP out for professional services and go down that road. And what I'm saying is either option that goes, and, and I'm sorry that I don't have a definite date for option A, but we're not looking for a penny from this organization. That's huge. And either way we go, the amount of rent is going to be much less, which is going to save the taxpayers in all three communities a lot of money. That's huge, too. So if we felt that we needed to get going, we could probably start our process tomorrow, too, if we wanted to build this and pay for it. But it's worth our effort continue on the road that we're going down to see if we can't get this building for free. But, but if you do lease agreement B, which no. is going to be on the 
which the town of Deerfield would, would be would be paying for. Mm -hmm. We would have to go through the town meeting process. And you'd have to go through yes. all the. Okay. I mean, we, can, we don't know what the cost is. You have to go through a debt exclusion vote. Yeah, the, the, the cost of that building, if we chose, would be around eight hundred thousand dollars. The cost of the building to to, to construct yes. would be eight hundred thousand dollars. And I'm, I'm not going to pull out my calculator. I, I'm, I'm just trying to factor in $800,000 divided by $36,000. <clears> the payback to the town of Deerfield is a little bit more than that. Why? Hmm? I mean, we normally do. We just spent six million dollars on highway garage. We're never going to get our money back for that. I, I understand. <laughs> I understand that. But why would the town of Deerfield do that if the cost to the town of Deerfield to go into the Waitley building would be dramatically less? Dramatically less. Well, we wouldn't own it. Right. You want to be a landlord? Why not? <laughs> well, I didn't, I, why? I don't know. I mean, I, I, You're I, a landlord, right? I'm, I'm missing... Oh, you missed that debate. Don't worry. <laughs> We've never made money off of any of the but I'm missing, real estate deals. I'm, I'm missing... You, you talked yeah. about saving all three towns' mm -hmm. money. You're not saving the town of Deerfield taxpayers' money by that scenario. You're, you're just not. You're going to. You're going to. You're, the debt exclusion on that is going to be. What was our debt exclusion on on, our, on the building we just bought? Anybody remember? Eight, eight ten. Eight, but beyond that, what was the what was the debt exclusion? I mean, what was the what, what was the, the the debt service? Thirty six. Thirty six. Thirty six. Thirty six thousand a year. I mean, you're you're not saving the town of Deerfield money. At thirty six thousand, we're breaking even, Jonathan. Over how many years? Thirty years. Well, ours was forty years. Wait, this was forty. The the debt service on the building you bought, right? So, it, I'm 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 missing something. It, 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 well, so I guess it's it's because the town of Deerfield, and and if I'm wrong, I apologize, and this is why I'm not going to say anything. The town of Deerfield. It seems that its motivating force here is to keep the ambulance service within the boundaries of its town. That's the motivating factor. There's, there's no other rationale to be on the hook for a building that you're going to wait for 30 years to get payback on. And we all know, and we've had conversations about this ad nauseum, that we don't know what SCEMS is going to look like in 30 years. So the motivating factor is that you guys desperately need the ambulance to live in the town of Deerfield. I, I just need to be clear on it. And then if that's the case, that's fine. But I just need to be clear on it. Would, be, would the location of that building be superior? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with that. Well, we, you know, we decided to I think it's great. I think it's a good location, but I don't think it's. I don't think it's better than the location we have. You run a. You're right next to 91. You're on a five and ten. You're, you've got light right there. I mean, how can it not be better than being on, down on Pine Street? It's got to be a better. Location. It's central to Deerfield, first Deerfield, Correct. but not for the three towns. But not for the three towns. It's not central. You don't think? No, I know it's not. They did this, the Baxter report did the study. There's by Pine Street. The the issue of Pine Street, as far as the access, was a major concern. As far as for the ambulance, as far as getting in and out of there, Zach hasn't indicated that. The, as the director, I've heard that several times. I've been to several meetings, but but I, I think it's the concern of. Can we let Zach talk to that? Sure. I have concerns about Pine Street. I also have concerns about being on the side of the railroad tracks in the elementary school and the high school in Yankee Candle, where we are now. 
And by being on the other side of South Deerfield, whether it be Waitley or Deerfield, but being on the southern side of South Deerfield gives me better and more expedient access to South Deerfield. Um, if, if your argument is that it's better for South Deerfield to be at 86 Greenfield Road, I'm not sure I can fully get on board with that argument from an operational standpoint. Maybe the, the, the question is, Deerfield, is if you need to put up Deerfield town money to build this building, are your voters gonna approve that at a town meeting? That's the question because all three towns are gonna have to come up with a vote at a town meeting to approve this. And how Only comfortable or do you have assurance that your voters are gonna approve spending 800,000 for a county, why South County wide ambulance service? Well, let's can, can we can we separate this for a second, just so that I'm clear? Um, they won't have to vote on the building of the building. No, but the Skems, Skems would have to vote on all three towns would have to agree for the moving to the to new location. To the location, Correct. right? So all three towns. The gamble is all three towns have to vote to agree to move into that. Facility. Well, and Mark, I think Fred's point is right, though. The gamble is also on, on the part of Sunderland and Waitley. Do we think that the town people, the, the voters of Deerfield, I, will, will do that exclusion, which we don't have to worry about? Right. And that, I, I just don't want to separate right. those yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One is so. Deerfield has to go through the debt exclusion or, or whatever to put up the building. Skims, the three towns, have to agree to the moving of the location right. into that area. But, but the debt service is going to be a question everybody's going to have. What's it going to cost if it goes either location? Well, that's, that's a, it's a really good question, and there isn't and anybody the, here that's going to answer it. But the initial cost is less in Waitley than it is in Deerfield. But, but, but the, you're, you're assuming that it, it's going to go that way. I mean, I've spent a lot of hours, you know, talking to these people, and I feel real sure that this option A is going to work. It's just the people that we're dealing with are not people that you can call up on the phone. They're not people you can run into at Jerry's, and we just I just have to sit and wait. It's frustrating for me, too. Uh, the option B was just to show you folks that we're, we're serious and we want to get this done one way or another. And, and you guys literally had this conversation last night? Yes. On the way out. On, on the, on, on, I'm sorry? Last night. Okay. We were talking about the negotiations. What do you mean on the way out? Piece. On the way out, we decided that we felt we could go if we have uh, agreement A has been discussed, and we've been working on that for months. I, I'm confused what you mean by on the way out. On the, on, at the end of our meeting, when we were going into when executive session, the door. we, Kip asked, if, if we don't have if we can't get the money for free, do you think it's worth going to our voters? Do you think the voters would support it? And Trevor and I said, yeah. And that was in executive session? That was going into executive session. We, After we were how long the presentation from Kip? We were asked, Jonathan, we were asked if we felt personally if the town would support this. Okay? Okay. This is not, this is not a, Oh, this was not on the agenda. This was not in any decision-making role. This was, Kip asked Trevor and myself, okay, if we personally would be supportive of, the, or do we feel that the town would support this? It, it wasn't on an agenda, Carolyn? No, it was not on the agenda. I'm not a lawyer, <laughs> but I would venture to guess that you just broke a couple of the meeting laws. No, we did not because uh, no vote taken. there was no vote taken. You guys, it was, that it was, was personal opinion, Jonathan. You're skating on very thin ground. Fine, can, Jonathan. Can. Then it's Kip's decision to present this set to this one, and as a SCEMS board uh, and member, then I am supporting this choice as also. Okay. Can, can I ask a question? When we had two medically qualified people on this board and that question was asked and the answer was no the town of people the townspeople would not support building a building for the ambulance what has changed dramatically since mark did you ask me personally 
Or did you ask? It was at it was at select board meetings at least. Six I don't or ever seven remember times. Ask, having you ask me. As a taxpayer in your field, I have a question. Go ahead. Sure. <laughs> what is the cost to outfit the Waitley building to build it out? It would to build it out. Yes. Yeah. It'll be. That's a very good question, though. It's it'll be in the neighborhood of four hundred thousand dollars. So the town of Deerfield would be responsible for paying two hundred thousand or more of that. So that's two hundred thousand right. dollars we would never get back. So at the end of thirty years, we break even with this one. So. Going to Waitley for the town of Deerfield, you're paying that up front, and then you're paying more money every single year. You, you could make the same argument for the high school that was built X number of years ago. You don't get the money back. It's and a that was the gist of the conversation. Was like, it, it's, do you, it, do you think this is possible? I'm just trying like, to educate yes. myself. Right, we're, but Bill, wherever it's a good we're, question. Wherever it's housed, okay, there is going to be a revenue stream to that town. There is. Well, it's to the district now. But I mean, right, yeah. but and that's not to the town, that's to the district, obviously. There's going to be a revenue. If it were good to go to Sunderland, it would be a revenue stream to the town of Sunderland. Absolutely. I, I don't think that it, it should be looked at as what are we going to get back? It should, needs to be looked at as what's in the best public safety interest. If if what do we get back, let me finish please, if what do we get back financially trumps public safety, there's you're a real problem. Wrong. What's that? You're looking at it wrong if you're looking at it financially. Exactly. Like, as a fire chief of the district, right. I would rather leave our fire station to go anywhere in my town than I would come from that spot in Wakeley. Just to go down Pine Street to navigate those two 90 degree corners. I mean, you know, we've got larger apparatus, obviously, but still, I mean, you're going through a residential neighborhood. I mean, think of the people that live on there and the red lights going by there constantly. You know, hearing well, that siren. It's sirens. not constant. I mean, how much, what's the average run per day? Three times a day. Three right? times a day. Right. That's not constant. Come on. It's more than it's going through there today. I get that, but let's not care. Yes. It's not constant. You know, and, if that's the issue, sure. then, then something should be done and something can be done. It's it's going to be difficult, but if, if that's an issue and a concern on Pine Street, and, and let's do something. And we've talked in other meetings of, of what the obstacles are. Well, we need to look at overcoming them obstacles. And, and we're going to go to Pine and, Street. And the, what you said may be accurate in terms of as, as, the, as the chief of the fire district for the town of Deerfield. We are a three-town oh, entity, and we, and we have improved response times in all three towns dramatically because of what we've put together and because of the job that Zach, Zach and his crew have done. We can't lose sight of that. So right. when you think of all three towns... Yeah. From the current location you're in today. From this right, one's going right. to be 60 feet over. I, I, and I understand that, but... You haven't run into the challenges of if there's a railroad issue, if there are the other concerns that Zach has. But you've, you've lived there for three years now. Have you encountered any of those issues? <laughs> My point was there are concerns everywhere. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. I don't want it to seem like, or the narrative to be that one place is perfect and the other one isn't. Every right. single place is going to have its concerns and they're all unique to each of its places. So uh, let's go back to the timing issue. And I'm, I, I really... I, I, I fear we are not going to come to consensus here. Well, it's, I mean, you talk about revenue source. The money that Deerfield collects for this, we want to put in, and I, excuse me if I use the wrong terminology, uh, some sort of an enterprise fund, whatever, to be used for future expansion and future maintenance of this building. We don't want the money to come into our uh, general funds. We want it to go separately to keep that building going forward. So we don't run into like we did at the elementary school. Capital. 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 You know, things like that. We want to plan for the future. So you'll forward. never have a return on the investment? <clears throat> Probably not. Not on plan A. Well, I understand. If, if it were plan B, you would never have a return on that investment from the logic you just gave us. Never. Makes sense probably. Oh, yeah, well, never. We don't get a return. You get, you know, we're not getting a return on, you know, a lot of the things that we buy. You know, it's just what you have to do, right? I agree. And we're I agree we're trying. That. We're. I'm working hard to put something together that is beneficial to every community, and nobody has to go and spend a lot of money up front. You know, and you keep searching for some reason. I, you know, come up with your proposal if you want, I, Jonathan. You should I, do what I, Deerfield does. 
Go out and spend your money, do your time, do what I did. Uh, we have kids. They did. We did okay, that. so you're, we have we done that. You, so you're trying to. You're, I'm it's not trying to history. history. It is revisionist history. You're trying to fool the people who are watching on that camera. How do you figure you're, I'm trying to fool them? Then what you put your they proposal. They don't say there's no plan, kid. Then put there your is. proposal forward, and then this board can vote on it. That's what we did. Oh my goodness. I was here. You did a year ago, and we presented costs with it. We hired a consultant to come, an architect to come up with costs. It's not something that picked out of the air. It was, it was okay. an architect did it, and he explained on 18 pages how he come up with the numbers, the 400 okay. something thousand. I, I don't we get presented this. that a year ago, okay. and a plan to show that. Okay, so why didn't the board act on it? We did. We they did, and 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 the. And, and that is when, and I could be wrong about the timing on this, that's right around the time when, when an element of the town of Deerfield did a sense of the town resolution to say, over our dead bodies. Essentially, that's what happened. And I'm being a, a little bit exaggerative there. But that's about the time when the town of Deerfield, on town meeting floor, I believe it was a special, I don't think it was a special. regular, it was a special, said, not in a million years. So what the town of Deerfield did was went absolutely against a unanimous vote of this town. So please don't. Okay. Of this organization. No, of this organization. Okay. Yes, so, yes, yes, I'm sorry. So the town of Deerfield then voted Essentially against. a resolution. It wasn't a binding. A resolution. It wasn't okay. binding. It wasn't binding. So they, they didn't want to go with that. So that left this board. We with, went out to RFP. And so you put on RFP and you get two responses. One. The one from Whateley and the one from the folks and, in and, and this board rejected both proposals, <coughs> by the way, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I wasn't here, on the recommendation of the town administrator of the town of Deerfield that that should happen. Hmm? I, don't I, believe, I was at the meeting and I don't believe that was correct. You, you were here. I, I could be wrong about that. But I. I, I there I, are meeting minutes now, so we'll be fine. Well, it, 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 and again, I, we, we, but I, we were we were informed, Bruce, that um, and, and Doug did tell us that because the there was something in the, in the Whiteley proposal either on size or location, and that you couldn't enter negotiate and you couldn't negotiate those things after an RFP was put out, which was incorrect. Did, did, did that, I think that was is. I mean, Jeff, do you remember something? Something similar to I, that. And I, and I, and I and can't and remember and the and exact and wording, and but it was, it was recommended that. So, and, right. and, and so Doug had said it'd be better to re, it would be better to to not do the R, to reject both to RFPs reject both. and send them to the town of Deerfield Board of Selectmen so they could then enter into a, a, a contract negotiations uh -huh. with the, which uh, the they town of Deerfield, do. which he chose not town of White. So, but, but it was incorrect information. If, if I may um, interject, the, no. the proposal was rejected because it didn't meet the specifications. If you look at the minutes, that's what it says. And that's why you could not go into a negotiation. It did not, neither proposal met the specifications. That is right. I do remember so we that. So we can, we, can we can go off an RFP right now. We do the same thing. We do the same thing again. Well, right. I think one thing it, to it, remember, too, is that RFP was written by the town of Deerfield and never came before it, this board to review. It it right. now. That was a problem. It's yeah. a huge problem. It's just, so I guess, Kip, this right. is why I, I'm, I am, admittedly, I'm struggling. Because I, I see it as a continuing roadblock against getting this done. Because the, and, and we formed this organization. We formed SCIMS by all three towns, because all three towns said we are going to abide by the recommendations of the SCIMS Board of Oversight, because they know how to operate an ambulance. And it hasn't happened repeatedly now, on, in terms of the location, of the permanent location of the, of the, so that's my frustration. And then we get this, and it's, oh, this is great. And, and it just, it doesn't add up. I don't because know the town time. wants to own the ambulance. Where we are right now, does everybody want to move forward on one of these two options? I mean, we're here tonight, correct? I mean, this, isn't this where the rubber hits the road? Yeah. I would, I would, I would make a motion that we should, we should um, have the town of Deerfield enter into singular negotiations with the town of Whateley. We already have. We already have. They said that motion's already been made, and our motion's already been passed. Yep. So why, 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 what are we doing? 
I just I, I like to explain how you come up with your three thousand per month. You know, it's, it's just a number on paper. We we showed numbers and talked about rent with justification for it. How did you come up? You're with trying to justify the thousand? cost of it. All I'm, all we're trying to do is to to make it you know affordable, if you will, to scams. Trying to make it you know reasonable, and this is what we felt we could do. Well, our figure was less than the three dollars, uh, three thousand a month. It was, but how much was the initial build up? This has no upfront cost to this organization. Well, you, you got, well, I think, there are two issues. You can have the monthly <coughs> rent, and you got the the, the build out either yeah. either location. So, I guess what's well, going to be the deciding factor is it monthly rent or? The, and you don't have, and if it's and if it's option B, option A, you don't have a timeline. Well, that's. I, no I, I just have to guess, but if, if option A does come through, I mean, we could probably start construction in a month. How, 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 do, we, how do we know? Oh, okay. What, where is that in writing? Where is the agreement? Uh, all right, let's... I, I, what, I, I, what Kip has done is gone out and done some research for you guys to consider. The fact that whether you give them a month or don't give them a month or plug on with what you want to do is your decision that you need to decide at this point in time. And as he said, rubber meets the road. The issues are, and we can beat around it forever because we don't have real facts or real numbers. We don't have anything to, to do. The question is, do you as a board want to extend this time period for them to get you those numbers and give them a deadline to do it by? The fact that you've already done the RFP and rejected it and asked for the top of Deerfield to go through and negotiate, they can what do it happen at the same time. time. Mark, if, if Mark, if I could interrupt for one second. Sure. I thought that's where we were. Last, I did month, too. I did. last, last month, last month we were told we were going to have a, a negotiation <clears throat> rock solid on the table before us. We were for, going to know one way or the other. For which, for Waitley's or for? For I didn't get the memo. I said that's no, that, no, that's absolutely care. I disagree with you about your comment about diesel before, but I didn't say that. <laughs> but what, I, what I'll tell you right now is that's exactly what you said. You were supposed to have a proposal in front of us in writing with what was going to happen. Not, not, not conceptual. And you said that. And, and, I, I, and, I, I and if that was tape, and if that was well, tape, I'll go get back that tape, and you and I will sit and watch it. That's fine. Because I, I, what I said is, I, I don't know, but I, within a month, I should have an answer. But that's what you said last month. month. That's what you. When, when does it end, Kim? No, that's what I said last when, month. When no, is your word? Is when is your word your word? That's what I want to know. Because right now, right now, you're calling me a liar. I right know. now, I'm asking you. When is your word your word? One more month. I and and you're going to say that we didn't, we didn't really say that? I told you. I don't have the, I don't know a definite. How much longer? I don't know. Well, that's you, didn't say that, you didn't say that last month. Well, I, I guess the question I have for you guys is if, because Deerfield is the fiscal agent, I'm going to propose two things. I'm going to discuss it. Let me ask first. Because Deerfield is the fiscal agent, is the Board of Selectmen ready to discuss with the town of Wake at the request and encouragement of this board to move forward with with South County EMS being housed at the Whitley Town offices. Are you prepared to do that? No. I'm not. Because I came to your town hall and I met with you and I said, okay, what do you want? And right away, you all you wanted to do was get money from the organization to go out and hire people to do this. It's cost, cost money. I can't turn my back on the reality of, of public procurement laws. I understand that. But, and what I'm saying is that I've worked hard to try to come up with a, a more economical plan. Okay, and, well, then, and you, you know, you don't see it that way, and I'm sorry. But we, and, and, I'm, and, I, and I know this is not going to be a, well, then I'm not going to say it. Probably not. Mr. Chairman, if, if I understand Kip's proposal, option A and option B, He's basically saying, we set a little figure here to put some money aside in the kitty for further maintenance of the site once it's built out. Basically, the town of Deerfield saying the building, if town meeting approves, if they have to go option B or what, that the town of Deerfield is going to provide the building for SEMS and it's basically not going to cost you beans. 
I mean, the money's going into a kitty to, to pay for the improvements to the building later on. But we're basically you're talking about upfronting all the costs if town meeting approves it, they have to go option B. And option A, it will basically be blessed by some donors. And, and what have been, I think it's, you know, that's the whole point. Deerfield's not looking to make any money on this I deal. Sure. And, and they're not trying to recoup the costs for an empty building that you've got. Right? They're trying to say is they think that this is all in the best interest of the residents of Deerfield and the residents of the three towns. And, you know, you got to, you know, you can't tie everything up together in an open meeting. But, you know, tips should be applauded for the work he's done in trying to organize and get this information together. He knows the town of Deerfield has a site. He knows that the town meeting, at a sense of the town meeting a year ago, said they didn't want to leave the town of Deerfield. Okay, and that was about 25 people. No, it wasn't 25. It was an awful lot more there. By the time the vote was taken, the no, Mark was, ups like Mark was upset because I cut off the bait. And he didn't get to say anything. I, you know, it, it, okay. We can go around circles. All but day. what I'm trying to say is, you know, it, you know, I think that Kippy's proposal is makes an awful lot of sense, and I think it's in the best interest of the town of Deerfield and the whole South County EMS. So I, uh, I will respectfully disagree. Oh. And, and, and we've disagreed before. Oh, yeah, and that's okay, and that's that's perfectly fine. But I would also, it does make me nervous when an 800,000, potentially, an 800,000 plus debt exclusion. Who vote. said they were going to get a debt exclusion? Maybe they take it out of free cash. Hmm. We're not taking it out of free cash. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's an option. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> wait, wait a second. It, it's an option. Wait, wait, wait a second. Jeff, can I pick you up off the floor? <laughs> and, 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 so, and, and, and by the way, it's, it's easy to pass town meeting. Wait, I just it's heard another body sitting all over in your face. It's easy to pass town meeting. <laughs> it's a whole other kettle of fish to go I mean, to the ballot. You've experienced that lately. I know. Didn't you not get the money to renovate the town hall? I know. Yeah. But so that's my point, that's, Bob. That's is the that point. It's just proved it's hard proved for to get the vote passed. And so if the vote doesn't pass in <laughs> several months, we're right back here again. Maybe. John? A couple of things. If, if we do this in Waitley, uh, my understanding is that Waitley you would float the bond or whatever is needed for, the, say, the 400000 Does that have to go to debt exclusion in Waitley? Depends on how we want to do it. Just like, just like, you know, it doesn't have to. All right. The other thing, at the August 18th meeting, Kip, when you were discussing how much more paying off that 400,000 over 60 months would be, your figure was way off. You quoted 550 more a month. It's actually $6,666 more a month or what that SCEMS would have to pay. Well, you're saying if the cost to the build out was 400,000 and the lease was five years, the agreement has always been that that would be paid off over the term of the lease. You need to talk about weightly. Right. 400,000 renovation on the Waverly building. Yep. Divided by 60, it's $6,666 a month. Okay. So you quoted 550 at the August 18th meeting. So I want to be aware, make sure everybody understands that that's another six grand that's added for the five year payments on top of the rent and the utilities in wait. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you subtract out the utilities, but so if Waitley's figure, I think it's twenty thousand dollars a year. For well, me, that's those okay. figures are way okay. off too. Okay. Well, I'm not sure that's true, John. I'll speak on behalf of the board of selectmen. Those figures are not way off. But I thought we were going with the RFP figures. I'll speak on behalf of the board of selectmen that those figures are not way off, and we discussed this. But I'm not going to discuss it anymore because it was discussed in executive session. That's sad. Okay, but. But we've got two, two lease options here presented by the town of Deerfield. And neither one, like Tom is saying, is, well, both of them are word of mouth. There's nothing in writing. There's, there's no vote on, on, on agreement being no, no, uh, substantial, no it, okay. substantial uh, vote to say that the town is going to approve the voting mm -hmm. for the additional money for B and for, for, for A. There's 
there's nothing in writing from whoever's going to build the building that they're going to do that for you. So how can we vote on something that's a concept? It's still a concept. You're asking two towns, well, you're asking two other towns to vote on something that you have a concept for that may work for South County MS. This is your two concepts. You're asking two towns to vote on that or to agree on that and, and sit and wait until either one happens. So on the, other, on the flip side, this board decides to go with Waitley. They give them $20,000 or more to go through the whole process. They come up with everything. Then your town doesn't approve your debt exclusion. Then what? Now this agency and all the towns are out to $20,000 and you're back to square one. Well, uh, all I'm saying is, you know, if you want to, you know, I guess you, you could just do the same scenario for Sunday. They well, might not Mr. approve Mr. it either. Mr. Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, there, there, there's one, one, one big difference is that right now, Whiteley has been talking about their proposals in open session for the better part of a year plus. The people in Whiteley had discussed it. Their board has taken votes. Right now, the Deerfield board has even, except maybe to a few people that are sitting in this room, most of the people in Deerfield probably, this is the first they've ever heard about that the town of Deerfield was even <coughs> considering building a building in the town. The town Sorry. of Deerfield voters haven't been there's been no vote on the board of selectmen. There's no, been no conversation with the. There's yeah, been no right. conversation with, with the right. with the uh, finance committee. There's been no vote. Uh, there's been no public hearing with. So no one has even talked about it. This is, it, it's it's really a conceptual thing right now, and that's yeah. and that's it's very hard for right. us. That is absolutely true. The only thing that we've talked <laughs> about is we've um, agreement A or the first option. We were pursuing that. Yeah. The, dis the only discussion that has occurred was was there was there interest in pursuing this on the town level if we could not come through in in a time timely manner. Well, it still doesn't concerned. right. Still doesn't mean that we're not going to get donations. We have a donation, as a matter of fact, from someone in Sunderland to do the paving. So you know, I mean, there are donations already on the table, but. We, we feel that it was important enough, or there was enough angst and interest on the town level, at least it appeared to me, based on my phone calls and conversations, that people would go forward with a sort of a break-even kind of scenario. And that's where Kip felt that we are not having to purchase land, or, you know, uh, with some donations, we could keep this cost around $800,000. And based on his expertise, I, that's a doable amount for us to front, given the fact that that's the interest of the townspeople. Is it, and so if, based on the meeting tonight, we would put it on the agenda and move forward. Worst case scenario, the town would have to, to, to do this. With the idea is that we're pursuing this this <coughs> option one or option A. We have always intended to have option A. My understanding is that it's going to occur, but we've been promised things in the past. I'm, I'm totally upfront and realistic about that, and they have not panned out. So, well, I'm a little concerned you keep saying we because everything I've heard it says you started to talk about this last night as a group. Well, we, were, we we have been, and and this again, it, it's my it's my angst. The town of Whitley has been about as transparent as you can possibly be, and I really worry that that you guys aren't be haven't been transparent, and I also worry that you're talking about this outside of an open meeting. I, I'm sure you have. I'm absolutely sure you have. There was no deliberation. There was just an opinion. Should we go forward? Would, would, would there be interest to go forward with plan B, or the agreement B? <coughs> you can bait me all you want, Jonathan. I'm not baiting you, Carolyn. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to say any more than just that it's my personal opinion that there is interest enough in the town to pursue this, whether Deerfield pays for it or not. I learned a long time ago that the reason that we think that we're going to always win an argument is that we typically only talk to the people who are on, have our side. 
and I've been as guilty as that as of that as anybody. I, I think it's going to be a lot harder than you, than you think it's going to be. I guess my question is to, to the Skims board: How much longer are you going to wait for something concrete from the town of Deerfield? I, the, the problem, Fred, is, is that I, I, we all we the Skims board made the decision. And we were just told by the town of Deerfield that they're not willing to enter into negotiations as requested by the by the Skims board. That's essentially the, that. That's the problem. And I don't have a solution for that. Well, you've had one person say that. Okay, that's fair. The whole board. That's fair. And um, you know, you asked me the other night what was going on, and I said I have no idea. I have no clue what's right. going to be presented. Yeah. You asked me. I did, right? and I believe you. Yeah. And I told you I don't know. Yeah. I said we're all going to find out Thursday night. I'm finding out Thursday night. You know what what we have here. Um, I think it's worth waiting a little bit and and seeing. I know how frustrating this has been for you all. I mean, I seen it from the outside and I'm trying to come in and learn this with you all it, it, it's very frustrating and I know you really want to go through with that other option I just thought this sounded like a great idea if it would save everybody uh, money and it would be good responses I, I'm curious and I you know I was taken aback a little bit that that location wouldn't be good I I was under the impression it would be a, a better location. If I'm if I'm wrong about that, I stand corrected. They're both good locations. They're both good. That's fair. That's so the way to put it is both they're both good, good. good locations. That's fine. So Great. I just if 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 we could have a little more time uh, and and beg for a little more time to see what pans out, that would be great. If it, if it doesn't work out, that, you know we understand. I mean, the the rubber has to hit the road sometime. I well, think I think it's worth it's it's a. It's a good enough option to wait a little bit longer. And, I, I, and as frustrating as that sounds, I mean, I'm not sure how the rest of the board feels, but that's what we're at. I mean, shouldn't we put a timeline on that? Uh, yeah, you could. Last one. You could, but, you know. We did. We did last one. Well, I know, but. It's, it's <laughs> hard. It's not easy, right? To well, ask for that kind of money for free, free is not something you can Could, could uh, we get a time frame? Like, uh, at our time frame. As much as we would love to all have that money to, to be able to make that decision, it's it's hard. It's not easy to get that that decision made. So I I understand. And we've had deals before where the administrative administration has been totally supportive of us, and then the trustees have felt they didn't have to do it. So I'm 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 caught in the middle because I have had history with the same situation. But we don't even have a letter of support from the administration that we've seen. You're right. Well, they wouldn't have right. said that. Mark? You don't really need that, though. Could, well, I mean, I, 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 it's the board of trustees that makes it. The decision. amount of frustration that I've had because we've been in this arena for 40 some odd years, um, where the town of Deerfield has had its ups and downs with the ambulance service, and the ambulance service has had to go to this route to be what it is today. It's finally gotten to a point where it's doing phenomenal work and it's a, the people are, are well respected for what they're doing and everything else. But the politics of this has been unbelievable for 40 years. And it's many administrations and it's many people and it's many aspects of it. But we're in deadlock because we can't move we being skims cannot move forward because the the people that control the money aren't willing to do the job that they were asked to do. At least no, one of them. Really at least one of them wait, has. Wait. Excuse me. At least one of them has. No, okay. Carolyn. I'm going to finish, please. Just right. once in my life, then let me don't finish. Say that I have made up a mind. No. One way or the other. What we were told is that basically, well, Carolyn, this was asked some time ago for the town of Deerfield to do it. And the town of Deerfield well, hasn't. Fiscal agent then. Well, it went to town meeting. It went to a vote of, of sense of the resolution of town meeting. But anyway, on the board. It, it's and we've looked at that plot of land before. We looked at the highway garage before, and we were we had the opportunity to address the RFP from the town. Put all that aside. Mm -hmm. Is Skems willing to say okay if you? We'll give you six weeks or two months, but if not, we expect at that point in time for the fiscal agent to interact with the, the Waitley to get the job done. 
Is that something the board is willing to do somewhere in the middle or even a month? I don't know. I, I'm trying to get us off deadlock because basically at this point in time, I can't think of anything else for us to do with all the tips on the table. But, it, but it, yeah, that's what we did last month. And, and again, I, so I, the, my, my angst now really, and, and I, maybe it's because I'm thinking about this a lot, but the RFP that people keep referring to was thrown out because of absolutely erroneous information from the Deerfield Town Administrator. And it just is. It just it, it just is wrong information. And I'm not saying he was he was he was he was malicious about it, but it was wrong information. And I, you know, the, the old adage: "Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me." Um, just I'm gonna. <laughs> the he advised the board to do something. The board is well achieved to decide whether to agree or disagree. They could have stuck to the ground or whatever. At the time, because there were no other viable means on the table, it was a no-brainer for us to follow what he said and move forward to that process. It was no, hey, you guys do this because it's a, a, a way around to get something. It was Follow a, what he said and enter into discussions with, with, with the right, and negotiate it. And it was, it was done all in a very um, consensual thought process. There was no bias, there was no trying to get around something, it was just trying to get the best deal for SCEMS because at the time more space had opened up. What had happened was when SCEMS first went in there, the town of Waitley wanted more space for their, their needs and we would have liked a little bit more. And that space then became available and we could then discuss a little more space for what would take us through five years, hopefully. So it was all a consensual thought process. There was nobody trying to short circuit anybody or trying to look towards making a making a area error that would cause us to be at this juncture today. We threw it out for the square footage. Right. Mm -hmm. That way we can negotiate square footage and, and, and do that. So and that didn't happen, unfortunately. So right. maybe you got to send the RFP out again. And if Deerfield Academy or Town of Deerfield or Whaley doesn't respond to it, then we, we go by what we have on the RFP. Oh. Whoever doesn't respond, they're off the table. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chair, if I could. Yeah. I, I, would, I would gather that if, um, if there's anybody watching this meeting, because they're not at home laughing um, at, at the six of us, we're, our, we're, we're, we're up here <laughs> arguing about a system that four years ago had 40 to 50 minute response times, if we had response at all. We're down to seven minutes. And we're, and we're, and, 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 Chief Swayze, Chief Ahern, gonna, or, or anybody, in, or Zach is going to tell you that the most important thing in, in emergency service is response time. Not only response time, but training. We have well-trained people. We have people that are, that, that are envious, other places envious of the people that we have. And the six of us are arguing about going what a mile the local we're separated by a mile I, i'm just saying give us a plan you know in, in I'm, I'm saying to waitley give us a plan with solid numbers i'm saying to deerfield give us a plan with solid numbers and move it forward i i, I i'm sitting here going you know we we spend we spend a lot of time um talking about this issue and and to me I will disagree a little bit with, with Chief Swayze because I never once thought about Sunderland making their money back on anything because we just we just heard about how not too long ago um, Deerfield bought an ambulance that now has 113,000 miles on it that's sitting in a that's sitting in a repair shop because it's not working and and pretty much whenever you go to trade in an ambulance 
or someone looking at a fire truck, I can tell you that the fire truck that we're getting rid of will be sold on eBay to some other town, we're probably get maybe $10,000. Uh, I'm not investing my, whatever my tax dollars are, and, and, and some of those about a dollar, a thousand or less for EMS service that I can have somebody in my house in seven minutes, I'm not really complaining about, but I'm talking about a dollar, a thousand to have that kind of service. Um, and, and I look at, I'm not, no one else has ever said I'm gonna get a return on building a fire station or on a, uh, and, and I can look in Deerfield and right in the center of town, how much is that fire station worth right now? You guys couldn't give it away. I, I don't know if that's a, a, that's a, a viable argument. I, I think we are gonna find a look what, and one thing that concerns me, Kip, about your proposal about option B is the $800,000. Um, where if we're going in here, uh, likely would be four hundred thousand. You know, and when you look at the total total expenditures, I, I mean that that concerns me. If I'm I'm looking at purely the financial thing, I, I that would concern me. So option, if you had option A, if you told if you came in tonight and said option A, and you had said you could put option A on the table, I'll tell you what, it'd be a hard it'd be hard to get pass up on that option. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, don't get mad at me. No, 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 no. But it would be hard. I get that. It, it would be hard. And I think it would be hard for you. Sure. But we, need, but we need the options on the table so that we can make a decision. And, and you know what? We can sit here all night and, and just keep discussing it, but we're not going to get any further until we have firm numbers on the table, I believe. So are you thinking we ought to give them another 30 days for well, our next regularly scheduled meeting? <laughs> Look, I don't... <laughs> I don't want to get, I don't want to, Kip, do you, Kip, I thought you said this last, do, do we have, I mean, do you have, are, do you, can, can you come to us in 30 days with a number? The only thing I can guarantee you is I can come to you in 30 days and say yes or no. That's the only thing I can guarantee. I have no control over about what other people's time frames are. Yes or no as to? We can do it or we can't. You know, uh, I can continue to work on our plan B. Uh, and I can you know, put that together more. But I was trying to avoid that because it does take a lot of time and effort. And you know, I really believe that you know the, the first option is going to fly. Okay. Can I just ask a simple administrative question? Of the three members of the board of selectmen from Deerfield, right there, just so we know, who has the vote? Who has the vote? I have the vote. Trevor Kip, I believe. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Okay. I, I, just, I, I just don't know. I, I, I yeah, don't just, know. Okay, that, that was my own part. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. The, um, if option A was on the table tonight, hypothetically, would, would this board move forward with it? Is it worth waiting for? I mean, does it, I mean, why would we even give us another 30 days if nobody would even go for that option? I mean, is it a good enough option in all your eyes? I, I, I agree with them. It's hard to say no to it, but I would want to see. We're having a hard time saying no to it. I, I know, but I, I would I would honestly want to see in the agreement that Deerfield Academy understands the process that they need to go through. Sure. Because again, I, I know I won't sign yeah. off on it unless. Jonathan, could, yeah. I try, could I add one thing? Yeah. Could we ask the town of Deerfield to get a, a legal decision on that? Mm -hmm. They can ask town council for, for a very quick uh, decision. I, I would amend that. I would say I would like to ask two different councils because okay. you can ask one council, mm -hmm. one opinion. Well, can, I, can I ask that you formulate the question? Sure. Brian, would you accept that, Carol? Yes, yes. Yeah. I would. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm, I'm not, I, I'm sure that none of us are interested none of us want, in None of us want to go to no. jail. Yeah. And, no. I, and it's not about going to jail, Carol. It's about doing, doing what's right. Doing the right thing. Yeah. Absolutely, Jonathan. <clears throat> and that's why we were waiting on this agreement A. I think Kip felt compelled to do something. And that's why he presented this agreement B, because, like I said, we haven't discussed this. But I am of the opinion, and I gave that to Kip last night, that I think it's worth bringing to the town of Deerfield if, if Deerfield Academy only did a partial donation or no donation. I still think it's worth having a discussion because it's the only way the town of Deerfield can move ahead clearly and commit 100%. You're never going to, 
if, if you have people that are going to stand up and, and deny support of South <coughs> County because they don't want to move out of Deerfield, then you give them a vote. This is your opportunity to support paying for this and supporting the service to well, stay in the town of Deerfield. I, I'm this is what it's going to cost. KIPP is doing a very conscientious job to come up with a reasonable, very inexpensive solution compared to what <coughs> normally happens in public buildings. And, and, and Carol, the only thing I would add to that is that... So I, we have to, I feel we have to go through... I would just like to say that I feel like even whether we... Whatever we do, I feel like we have to give that option to some of the people in town so that they will just... Some of the people? To give them the opportunity to vote to support all of the people should get the opportunity yes, to have their input. If the, it's whoever shows up, that's well, not me. And, and 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 I would argue, Carolyn, that because I respect a lot of people in Deerfield, that the vast majority of the people in Deerfield will vote for what's in the best interest of public safety, as opposed to the vocal minority who just want the ambulance service to be in Deerfield because they want it to be in Deerfield. But and yes, there heard, is an element of that. Okay. You have yes, to admit there but is Jonathan, an element. we just heard that both locations are equally good. Okay? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that it's, that the majority of the people in Deerfield haven't really been exposed to this. Can, can you put it on your next select board meeting to see Should well, be a information item to see we, what reaction you get from people? We have there? to, this, like I said, there was no, it was just off the cuff, do you think that people would support this? And I, and I gave my personal opinion, yes. I well, think people would. So we will have this discussion in, in our next meeting, obviously, because nobody's seen this. We don't know anything. There's been no discussion. There's been nothing nefarious going on. KIPP has been pursuing this first option. I, I from what I understand, it is, it is pretty solid. But we've had pretty solid options before different things. So I, you know, there is no guarantee. So kind of back to my question, if it was solid tonight, would we want to entertain this? Is it worth taking a little more time? I mean, is it that good an offer to take a little more time? Does the board think that's worth it? Sounds like to me that we've got another month to wait. We're going to ask legal counsel. You guys are going to bring it before your mm -hmm. select board meeting. And can I? We can put it for the October 5th. I would request that you ask the board of selectmen from Deerfield to have a public meeting, not have it as part of their regular meeting, because it won't get the attention. Mm -hmm. And have them discuss the most options. I think you're 100% spot on that if we get it for nothing, there isn't going to be a person in Deerfield who's going to say, <laughs> there's a no-brainer for you. But $800,000 is Might a, different, a discussion. different discussion, especially when you have to understand that the $400,000 that are going to be paid in Waitley is going to be paid by three towns. Correct. So our portion of 51% of it is going to be $200,000 it's a big difference between $200,000 and $800,000. So that discussion needs to be had. Sure. And I'd support this going any place that it will go and give them a home. I'm not sure when you could have an open meeting. You know, have to wait and get some answers before you could have a meeting. Well, no, no conceptually, it, it, it wouldn't hurt. If, if, no. there, if there is a public hearing, I would like to respectfully request that um, a presentation could be made from people who might have a different opinion than you guys do about it, so we could sell the other, not sell, we could present <laughs> the other side. So. <coughs> I think that it, I, I think that that's a fine thing yeah. to do. Yeah, I mean, I think people need to discuss it. it right. to there is, there open. is. But, but, We're making but progress. Jonathan, you have to understand, if people don't understand, there's still, there's, there is an expense. Yes then they're never going to commit to us moving forward and having this happen in, in Waitley. People need to know that there isn't, if, if, if the, we cannot get it gifted, then it is going to cost people money. Regardless. Regardless. Yeah. Right. But, but there, there is a cost difference, and mm -hmm. it's going to cost them a lot more. But they'll end up with their choice. Mm -hmm. 
of being well, in the town of if Deerfield. It, if it has to go through the town of Deerfield, or town of Deerfield does build this, are those real numbers, $800,000, or is it mm -hmm. gonna be? That's what's coming back in a month. You know. That's, that would have to be for the public hearing, the meeting. Yeah. I mean, it, they talked about it last night. And, and we talked the about it literally in, in 10 seconds. So Do you the, think there would be support if we, if, but, but, if we fronted the money? And that was all there was. Carolyn, was we got that. But okay. the question they're asking is about how accurate the numbers are going to be. We have to work out that for the public hearing. Mm -hmm. And whether it's $800,000 or 700000 or a, a million dollars, it's all stuff that has to be hammered out and quickly. Because the board has asked with respect mm -hmm. for the town of Deerfield to move forward with this thing. And you guys are at, at, in the driver's seat right now for that aspect of it. The other thing I would ask them to do, if you give it a time extension at another meeting, is specifically ask uh, get uh, some kind of agreement from from Deerfield Academy <coughs> for for building this because earlier discussion he said he'd get a word of mouth agreement on either option A or B. I think you need to consider more than just word of mouth. So I would suggest you ask for something in writing from Deerfield Academy. Well, yeah, I would guess you would have to have that before anything happens, but yeah, yeah. Well, but but I think we would want it wherever for your next meeting, not six months from now that you finally get something. That's what he's. That's what he's working on. Well, he's work on getting word it. of mouth by next meeting. I think are we going to hear word of mouth for how many meetings? No, I, I think that what. Tom recommended is it, it's a deadline. Right, but then then Kip's response to that was everything word of mouth. And I'm suggesting the skims to get something more agreeable, uh, more definite, definitive than word of mouth. We've got word of mouth today. <clears throat> That's all we're going to get in a month from now. What are we going to do? Talk about the same thing again next month? That's what I'm saying to the board here. Decide what you want from the town of Deerfield for the next meeting. Be specific. And I guess the other question that I have is if, you know, you're right, obviously, to move anywhere has to go to a town meeting vote of all three towns. If it is, if Kip can't come up with this information, if plan A doesn't work, whatever he comes up with. And this board reaffirms its wish for the town of Deerfield to enter into negotiations with the town of Whaley. I guess I'm wondering whether on town meeting floor, whether the board of selectmen will enthusiastically support the wishes of the SCIMS Board of Oversight, or whether they will hold withhold that support. Because if they withhold the support, well, then you know it won't pass. And I, and I got to know that. Are you asking how I will jump? <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm kidding. I'm, you, you get my point. I though. Do. Because it's important. Because, you know, a board of selectmen can't guarantee passenger town meetings, but I can no. guarantee you guarantee killing them. Sure. I mean, I think if that's, if that's the decision of the board to go somewhere, I'd be 100% behind it. I mean, Wouldn't it make sense to, them. if you're saying put the cart before the horse, you know, if indeed that's the case where all three towns have to vote to move, I mean, there's been debate about that in the past. Is there I think it's the agreement know? that each town, in the agreement, they, each town has to vote on the housing of it. Right. So yeah. before they enter into negotiations, really, about moving, shouldn't town meeting approval be had first? Mm. Otherwise you can't, you're spinning you can't, the wheels and get nowhere. It, you can't without a designated location. Well, it's written poorly. It, the design was that we couldn't, originally when we wrote that document, it was so that we could not take on more people. We couldn't expand without the three towns agreeing. The actual where it was housed was just a glitch in the wording, but it's 
it's there and it, it is binding. But without a location, we can't go to the three town meetings and say, we want to move because you can't where. just leave it as a well, move and, dot, and, dot, and, dot. And John Lee is the only location that's out there right now, you know, based on the RFP and all the discussions. So why don't you go to town meeting and say, we want to move to Waitley. If we get a yes vote, then we start negotiating. Otherwise, we're going to go through all this plans and everything like that and maybe end up right back here. Well, there's a possibility either way. You're right. Yeah. Just a quick this, uh, yeah. comment, though. You know, as a as a resident of Deerfield, and obviously concerned about all three towns, I feel a little funny about approving something and then go to negotiate it. I've been in negotiations for thirty some odd years, yeah. and usually you negotiate ahead of time. If it works out, great, you come to an agreement. If it doesn't work out, you walk away. I find it very uh, a little unnerving, to be honest with you to all of a sudden say, oh yeah, we're definitely coming. Now let's negotiate the price. I, I, I struggle with that. Because, you know? the, because the price is going to be part of that. Right, yeah, of course. Of right. Yes. But you know, the kicker about the IMA yeah. is that while it does say that, you have, that it has to go through all three towns, the IMA also says that it's just the vote of, the, vote of each of the boards of selectmen to change any <coughs> element of the IMA, which means that the three boards of selectmen could vote to change the IMA portion that says we have to go to town meeting in all three towns to approve. I mean, that's how, to Mark's point, poorly written the thing right. is. Yeah. We could I circumvent understand. that, mm -hmm. but we don't think that's a good idea. We want the support of the community. Can, can we stay germane to our, the topic? Right now? <laughs> the, the, the conversation is supposed to be on housing and, and, and why I, I enjoy the conversation about the, the original memorandum of understanding. We, I, I don't, I don't want to rewrite that right at the present time. I, I think we have to settle one thing first. We're going to decide if we want to, uh, you know, wait until next month's meeting. To be blunt, be I, blunt. We yes. Blunt. Well, I was trying to look it up. I don't know when the next trustee meeting is. And the trustees would have to vote on a donation of that size. So. So that is information that we'd have to obtain. The other thing that I look at too is that you know we have housing through the end of July or end of June. I mean, if this subject was, you know, we could get an ambulance that we just decide to buy for nearly three hundred thousand, we could get it for a hundred thousand dollars. But we had to wait a couple of months. There'd be no question. We have three ambulances. One's broken, but we, you know we get lost. We would wait to find out. This is kind of a similar thing. You know, it, it, it could be a great deal for all the communities. And unfortunately, it, it's just, this is the avenue it has to go down. I, that, you're absolutely right. As an advocate for my staff, in a couple hours, they're gonna be rolling out camping mattresses and their sleeping bags yep. tonight, just like they have since every night on July 1st, since July 1st, 2014. So, I, as an advocate for my staff, and every time we delay and we try to find a better option, I cringe and I think about the morale and how that affects those people. That's not to say that I, I want to make anybody make a decision prematurely, but just to keep things in perspective here, um, as far as I'm concerned. Sounds like to me we're tabling it until next month. Yeah, some well, remember well, that? well, if we're going to move next month, we have to come back with a plan. The, the first plan, and I, and I hope I, I hope this is understood. I, I think Whiteley, Sunderland, and Tom administrators need to get together, come up with an RFP, get it in the, in the thing for for an architect, and so we know how much it's going to cost. We were going to do that last time. I thought so also, but I guess we haven't moved forward on that. Right. So, Brian, so can I, you speak to that? Well, what's what's the proposal? Well, right. what's, what's how, 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 do, how do we need to go forward with an architect? For we, have to go through, we have to go through design, the design, Correct. The design selection. How do you do that? Yes, we would put together a request for qualifications. All right, so let's put together a request for qualification, work with the town administrator someone, and get that done. I'm not sure the request for qualifications, correct me if I'm wrong, but will the request for qualifications mention a dollar figure? No, that will, that will, that will allow us to hire an architect. 
You, ne you never talk about when you hire an architect, or you never talk about no, you never talk about dollars until it's done. Right. But right, and, and and you put in the thing a very thing subject to availability of funds. Right, but it, but it will. But my point is, we won't have any more definitive cost estimate based upon our. I I don't care. Okay. But we don't. Okay. Yep. But you. But so okay. if we don't have anything, if we can't move forward, okay, then at some point this board is going to have to make a determination. We have to come back and say, and and it's going to take two weeks to get in the central registry, depending on when the, at least, well, the maximum of two weeks. Could be a week, but to, depending on central registry, that'll be posted for a week or two in the central registry, right? So that's a month right there, mm -hmm. right? So we have to have, so we, you have to be, this, this group has to be prepared to move forward to put financial numbers together on the Whiteley project. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, Jonathan, Fred, dear uh, Whiteley, I don't know how much it's going to cost. It could cost anywhere from one hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand dollars. I don't know that number. So you have to have an architect lined up, ready to go, right? And the whole design selection. I mean, you have to do interviews, and you, it's a process. You could be two or three months just doing that. Who's going to pay for the architect? Oh, anyway. We don't. We don't have to. We're not paying for it yet, Fred. <clears throat> All you're selecting is an architect, and that's it. It, it, and, and you again, won't do anything. You'll just have the name of a company that could do it. No, I'm saying we're starting the process so that <coughs> if we're not any further, if we're we're in the same looking thing as right now, and this board decides to move forward, we can then move forward with the Whiteley project. We have the architect, and you and have the process. Right. Okay. The process is started. It won't cost any. What is Deerfield going to do to further promote their proposal? Are we going to hear word of mouth? Continue well, right, right now, <laughs> Fred, I, I understand what Kip's doing. And, it, and if Kip can make what he's doing happen, I give him all the credit in the world. I have a hard time thinking that any, anybody, the, the, the Deerfield Board of Trustees, is going to say, hey, we're going we're to build this building for you at no charge. I'm skeptical because skeptical, skeptical, I've been in public for almost 20 years. And, and, I, and, and most of the time people say, don't ask me for money, just ask me for things I can do and I'll do it. But when you're asking for money, that, that seems to be a kicker, okay? If he wants to keep working on it, God bless him. Let him work his heart out to make this happen. And if it does, he's a hero. If it doesn't, I want to give some people a pat on the back for him trying. And you can't, because the man tried. What I'm saying is that we have to have plan B in effect. Plan B, what we came through from the RFP process is that there is no other facility out there. Right. I think we all agreed on that. That's right. Right? Yeah. Yes. You, 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 and, and Kip said that yeah. two well, meetings ago. Right. So we have to get we have to move the process. And and, and, and so I want to move the process forward. I don't want to think. That's one thing. The second thing I think we have to have, and, and Jonathan has a point, and, and I, I'm I'm a little fuzzy on it but I like it if put thing is is have town council and I don't care if it's Deerfield, Whiteley, some of whoever town council ask about the prevailing wage mm -hmm. thing. I think it should be both. Huh? Yeah. Have it both so sure. there's no it, it doesn't and I don't it does it doesn't matter if that if that's fine. Deerfield can have it, Wendy can have it and you, and you can and and we can see what the lawyers say. Come up with a worded I mean it's pretty easy wording, I think. And that way we're gonna talk about something positive next time. Yeah. We're going to move the process. Yeah. Can and we're not, and it's, it, huh? Hallelujah. But it's not what I think, because it's going to be based on fact. Can we see if Kip can get a, um, just a letter to, to show the intent of putting it in front of the Board of Trustees from the administrative people? Would that be something? I, I don't know. I don't know what the skill is. trying, I guess. Yeah, but they must have sent a letter as request, making, you know, seeing it up for, for the trustees. I mean, well, they, were, they were looking to a cop talk with them. Yeah. If, like, if you could send something, that, even in the country. something in good faith for that, and, and then also the, the cost for the town of Deerfield to do it on their own. Right. You know, that's the important thing. If we could have those two things showing that A is going somewhere and B is going somewhere, it would be great for for 
moving forward. We can definitely put this on this agenda for October 5th to come up with some kind of discussion about us financing it and then have a set up presentation date but you keep before it, before this meeting but I think you have to have a solid number that you're talking about you have to have the conceptual plans you have right now I think Kip, Kip, can, Kip, Kip can give us the numbers on this yeah yeah, uh, can you work up real numbers that are reflective of what it would cost us to do this with prevailing wages? I, I can do that, but I think um, what I'm going to do beyond that is, uh, you know, maybe talk to the board about getting our own engineer. So if it has to go plan B, that will be prepared for that. But uh, I can also have, um, I don't even know, because I'm, I'm, I'm trying also not to get in trouble. I could hire an engineer to do that, but then that would disqualify him from being the engineer because we didn't go through a bidding process. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, 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 I know that there's hurdles in there, but it's for this board, sure. it would be nice if we had even a ballpark, you know, mm -hmm. scribe numbering, because the reality is, is as you said, oh. I do. I, I mean, it, I mean, I have the cost of every window, every two by four, every fifty-pound box of nails. Uh, I have a real good guesstimate of the, the man hours, uh, the prevailing wages for the carpenters, the plumbers, the concrete people, the whole nine yards like that. But it, it's you know, there's. I don't put a, a whole lot of other effort into it because that's not where I'm. I want this to go. Well, I. And, and, but I understand. But the town of Deer, I mean, the, the Deerfield, Deerfield Academy is going to want to know those numbers. The, the, no. The, they, they don't want to know. They have their own engineers. They'll take care of that. Yes. Oh, oh, but I guess they, the Board of Trustees is never going to say yes. They're not going to bless this project without a sense of how much it's going to cost because they're going to be answerable it's, to, it's the, not to, the, to the to the, to the people that, that, that they raise money from. Their alumni base. Yeah, in terms of how they're spending their money, they're going to want to know how much it costs. It's, it's, All right, who's going to job for next month? Yeah. The administrator's got a job. The, uh, we're going to talk to lawyers. Mr. <coughs> Chip's going to continue on. Yeah, one thing in regards to our it's probably possible that we can hire an architect for under ten thousand dollars to modify what's been done, which means that we would not need to do an RFQ process. So, either way, um, I just want to move forward. Yeah. And, and so that next week we're, we're, we're taking positive steps. And I think we can. I, and, and, and if Kip Sins falls, like, yeah, if Kip Sins falls in place, excellent. But we, should, but, we, but we really need to, and, and, then, and if it doesn't, then they have to have a sense of their town if they think that, you know, they're going to get an $800,000 thing tax. We have to give people the opportunity to, to say, That's are right. you interested? Right. This is Absolutely. what the impact is going to be. Mm -hmm. And if you want it that badly, then this is what's going to cost. More than one board of selectmen has sat up in front of the town and got vote, voted down. No. Okay. See, no. We ever thought on the agenda, Mr. Chairman? Anybody in the least? Really? The MS director's compensation and evaluation. That was the other thing on the agenda. Um, oh, we already handled that. No, we kept talking about it month after month after month, but we already have anything yet. Um, South County EMS Board of Oversight completed an annual review back like four months ago. The director Zachary spent the members weighed their thoughts and consensus was reached. The purpose of the review is to look at not only Mr. Smith's performance thus far, but also look at the setting performance goals for the future and determine an appropriate and sort of compensation for his duties as agency director. Based on his clear and consistent dedication to the department to increased initiatives as well as enthusiasm to build ties to the community he serves and the support he has with the South County and the Board of Oversight over the long and approved of Mr. Smith's performance thus far and wishes to recognize this fact. After reviewing both Mr. Smith's current compensation and relationship to his continued impressive performance as well as comparable positions and commensurate compensations, 
and recent fur carb studies. The Board of Oversight voted at their September 22nd meeting tonight, and this is what we're going to talk about. Um, recommend to the Deerfield Board of Selectmen that they appoint Zachary Smith to a grade six step, just grade six. Um, whatever the, he's at $65,000 now, moving it up to 75. I'm not sure with per card study and. How many steps is that an increase? If it's one step, it's not an issue. If it's multiple steps, then it has to go through our personnel committee. It would be a, it would be a five step. Yeah. Uh, well, we, the select board of selectmen can't vote on that. Um, or the personnel committee. Yeah. Um, what we can do is, if you vote that, then we can send it to the uh, personnel board, and then <clears throat> there has to be a presentation to the personnel board as to why you're having multiple steps increased. You just... I mean, basically what you're saying now is what you would say to the personnel board, but the personnel board in our, our town always has to review multiple step increase. Understood. Just uh, going by the recent per study and any, you know. Well, that's, that's what your justification is. Yeah. I'm, I'm not one way or the other, that's just our process. And then from the personnel board, it goes to the board of selectmen. And then the board of selectmen would vote. Do I hear a motion from the board? Motion. Second. Discussion? All in favor? <laughs> Discussion? Yes. We're moving, uh, we're moving that five steps and the grade. Well, we're recommending to the Deerfield. The, the grade is the same. It's just five steps. The grade doesn't change. But it, it was there, um, so the, there was discussion on, was, there was a performance review done and all of this. Uh, did I? I didn't know if I saw that. I haven't seen any of that. No, I can forward to. I would, yeah. Okay. Along with this. I would feel better if I read that and had some, um, some basis for voting on that, or maybe I would abstain until I read it. I mean, I, that's a thing that I, say. I just don't, I don't know if I would feel comfortable voting on that without reading. That was all sent out back in the before my four months before ago. Ah. the change of. No wonder. Right. Yeah. So then um, I would abstain. A little, little more information. Um, basically, Going back is higher, June's higher, the lowest step. And it was uh, done as a. Uh, uh, so a guy coming in with no experience. No experience and everything else. Uh, he's proven uh, through his actions. And the um, performance appraisal was written uh, by Matt Russo that, okay. that provided all the information that was needed to show that he had achieved those levels. And uh, there was a matrix that we used to use um, with skill level and knowledge. And it was a, just a fill in the block. And he met that and level. He met all those <coughs> and he also met in Furcock's evaluation process. Um, what it leaves you guys with is do you agree with what that was? And everybody. When we took the vote at that point in time, um, was to agree on that aspect of it. <clears throat> what you have to agree now is whether you can afford it. <laughs> right? This the decide, deciding factor is it do you in your your uh, capacity feel that it's a, a prudent um, expenditure? Um, and basically, I I think that Max, if you read it and stay from it, but Max. Justifications and, and filings, you'll find that there's a sufficient amount of evidence that you can move forward. You can move forward to that process. Anybody else have any discussion? Um, 
Um, I reviewed his hours worked, and he's always over 40 hours. Yeah. You know, he's got other people in the department that are making more money than him with their overtime. He's not eligible for overtime. Okay. Um, <coughs> area departments, a uh, new paramedic is making 60 to 65,000 a year. 65 to 70. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. He's got a lot more responsibilities than that. Sure. Um, I really think it's justified. Okay. And my perspective is that I'm not in a position to look backwards to when I was not a member of the board to when I was not yeah. watching Zach. Um, from an outsider's perspective, this organization has done a great job and mm -hmm. you have to give credit to the person who runs the, the, the service. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I'm fine with it. And I'm not second guessing what you're saying, Trevor, at all. Yeah, I I'm just saying I'm fine with it because I, I'm not in a position to second guess the oversight that took place before I was a member of the oversight. I agree with that. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Five point. Sustained. Director's report. Before we adjourn. I'll blast through it since okay. I know we've had a full night. I actually had one question. It's not on the agenda, but um, what is Linda Morarby's um, death going to impact any kind of accounting for us or problems with our um, the so short answer is, so Linda Moriarty was the director of Western Mass EMS, um, which is the regional level of our oversight. It's a quasi, we answer to the state level, but there's this quasi regional um, level that helps facilitate the EMS stuff. Linda Moriarty has been the EMS, or has been the director of that organization for a number of years and has been in EMS since EMS was a thing, and she just recently passed away. Uh, it will not affect us whatsoever. Uh, Western Mass EMS is very robust. They, they have an assistant director who's going to be taking over, and they have a board, and um, it's not that it's not but from the loss of, of her presence that there isn't going to be any sort of... So, so that, because my concern was that they were underfunded the last two years, and the on the state level, they haven't been able to maintain, you know, the EMS head mm -hmm. of, of, you know, the state... Level. Yeah. So Linda has been really doing an extra lot of work. Absolutely. And she's been advocating tremendously. And I, and I'm just so you don't think there's going to be any impact with our paperwork and stuff. You don't. Think uh, not from a paperwork, okay. not from regulatory. I think we lost an incredible mm. oh, uh, brain trust there. You know, as I far as our I didn't mean this to sound so cold. No. But I was <laughs> worried if there was a negative because we have so many per diem per persons. No, no, uh, the, the way that we interact with Western Mass EMS isn't going to affect us in any okay. sort of regulatory right. I just wanted to make sure there was gonna be additional no. workload for you or or that the paperwork was gonna be path no. work, worked on it fast. No. Okay, all right. I didn't know her, but I, just reading her obituary, she sounded like an amazing woman. Absolutely incredible, incredible yeah. Talent. She was really, really nice person. Really committed. Yeah. Let's see. All right. Sorry, Zach. I just yeah. Really no, that's that's fine. that's fine. all right. Uh, I'm just gonna blast through this. Uh, IDs are out, um, which is great. This was mandated by the federal government after September 11th. The uh, county EMS committee coordinated with the council of governments. Um, the big problem for a long time was just finding the money to do this. Uh, you know, the, the individual cost is low, but times all the departments, all the personnel. So now we have IDs as required and accountability. So um, when we have major incidents and things like that, we can um, check in with the fire department, incident command, and, and stuff like that. So these are rolling out the first batches out, um, and we're going to get everybody um, those. Let's see. Um, Medicare out of Greenfield. Um, slashing hours, uh, the rumor mill is no longer authorizing any sort of overtime with them, and as a result, Greenfield and Turner's, which have basic level ambulances by their fire department, um, now can't get paramedic intercepts when they need them. 
Um, so I've been communicating with the chiefs of Greenfield Fire, Turner's Fire, about uh, entering into intercept agreements with them um, so we can make sure everybody is covered. Uh, we do do intercepts when our staffing allows it. Our, those protocols are already in place. Um, so during the day when the impact shift is on and I'm on, we can have we can make sure we still cover our coverage area. We can allow that intercept to happen. So that's those are things that will pay back. One intercept pays for that that coverage during the day. Um, so Great. not only are we providing these services, but revenue stream and paying for our staff and and all that good juju with that. Um, there was a question last month about um, debt and bills that have gone and whatever. Um, I've included in here the draft um, Hatfield Fire Department policy regarding um, when these things would be written off or stuff like that. Um, as far as writing off as well, I mean, that's something that I need to coordinate with Brenda and at the town level. I mean, that's certainly something for your books, um, not ours. Uh, when it comes to reviewing these things, uh, this is a lot of um, just person hours it takes to go through one by one even following this protocol. So we need to figure out some, I think the key here is figure out an objective way, an objective standard to apply to everything, um, whatever that is, and then figure out whose responsibility and duty will be to, to go through and, and um, follow up that stuff. That's pretty cut and dry. It's your responsibility to determine where the threshold is, and it's your responsibility to tell the town of Deerfield what the write-off is. Right, so so I guess uh, you know I, this this policy. <coughs> I talked to Colerain, Hilltown, Highland, Hatfield, Northampton, um, all about what they do. And basically, every single patient's broken down into two categories. Um, first, and it's are they a resident of their service area or not? Uh -huh. um, and if they weren't a resident of the service area, I guess the, the thought is, well, their taxes aren't going into the system anyway. They're not really paying a subscription fee or anything, so it's just reported. It's just they are passers through our our community, and we pass it on. Um, of the people that are residents, then there is usually some sort of um, hardship threshold. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's about determining that. Some places, I think that the Hatfield one is just, they can apply for hardship. There's a form to do it. Um, other places were a little bit more, um, well, I know the people in town pretty well, and I think he can pay, and I think he can't, so we're going to send him to collections, and we're not. Um, uh, that makes me real nervous, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so um, I, I think, it, to me, it kind of seems obvious about you know what what avenue um, we should take there, but I think this is probably, I mean, this is a question for the Board of Oversight, um, and then it's just a matter of instituting it. Um, we'll also have to catch up. Uh, you know, I've gotten reports from Comstar about breaking down um, things. The report they sent goes all the way back to 2008, um, so we need to separate out yeah. Deerfield EMS and South County EMS. Um, historically, since 2008, there's like $468,000 sitting there of uncollected bills. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like 460 something, um, so almost half a million dollars of uncollected. Uh, that sounds like a shockingly high number, um, and it is, but it's also, there's a lot of people out there who can't pay a $1,200 ambulance bill, so it's not unusual to not have these bills paid. Um, so, so I guess my, my well, I mean, I know from 2008 to whenever South County started, I, I'm not worried about that six right. years right. or whatever. But I'm just, and again, why carry that on the book if you're not having anything? And, and if you and if you deem someone the ability to pay is $20, then charge them the $20 and then wipe that rest off right off the books. Why is right. it staying on the books? Right, well, it's staying on the books now because there's been no action taken on it. Comstar gives a report and says, these are everybody that hasn't paid, um, and then it's up to, in this case, the fiscal agent kind of Deerfield to decide. Um, as far as collection agencies go, that's also something else, a separate contract that would have to be um, entered into with that agency and, and the terms of that that you would do. For Let's that. try to come up with some kind of policy and we'll present it to the board then we'll present sure. it to Deerfield. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. Um, big question, um, kind of the elephant in my report here of the 5% the question that the Deerfield Select Board had. Um, I felt 
Um, I was kind of stuck between a hard place of my bosses, the Board of Oversight, and a hard place of my bosses, the Deerfield Select Board. Um, so, can the indication, the reason why we're asking the department heads, we wanted to get a feel of what some kind of decrease was going to be. Sure. I do not believe from everything that's been indicated that the governor is going to institute any nine C cuts. Yeah. He seems to be real adverse to that, which is good, because mm. that's obviously disruptive when everyone has a budget. But the revenues, collection revenues continue to go down, and just based on past history, even though he's, I, I think he's, because he has been a selectman in the past, he is sensitive to local aid. It just, local aid is a, where to cut. So sure. we just sent a memo out to all department heads to try what what would be an indication of a 5% cut. What what kind of services are would be impacted. Yeah. And the idea is to get a handle on that so that we're not just, you know, shocked and we can be thinking about priorities or what what needs to be done to um, <coughs> handle I mean we years we've been doing level funding. So it's no you know, big jump to do a little bit, fund. but but everything is so bare bones yeah. because we've been a level fund is basically a cut. Mm -hmm. So you know, are we back to having, you know, not not supporting capital and projects? Are we not supporting, um, you know, tree trimming and tree sure. cutting and stuff? So the idea was to get feedback from department heads. Um, what what would be the impact of a five percent cut? Yeah, I, I mean basically, I, I can't. The things we can't negotiate, we can't control. The cost right. of gauze, right? You know, like those types of things. We have no. The the one area that we do have control over is staffing. And so once we start talking about if all of a sudden there was five percent less money in the universe, what would I do? The only real way that we can control an EMS is by not paying people anymore. Not paying people means we're, we are minimally staffed for what we're trying to achieve. So with less money for staff means that it affects right. staff, which is then turns into a question for the Board of Oversight, which right. is why. Well, what, yeah. that's what I wanted to know. Like, is there options? Um, can we get clerical support to free up some staff for actual, you know, because mm -hmm. you're paying salary for you know, administrative stuff. Can we can we get a part time? Can and then I know it's difficult because yeah. it's not like it's straightforward stuff. But could if you could get a competent person, can, can some of the hours that we're using for EMT hours or you know paramedic hours, yeah. can we do that with a clerical person? Say twenty hours of mm -hmm. no benefits. Can we? Yeah, you see, so we, now you're talking about adding staff above what we already have, and so it's... I know, yeah. but what I'm saying is think, I mean, it's hard for us. We're not trying to do your job, okay? We're not trying to, you know, tell you how to do your job. But if you could think, is there any, should we hire another person? Does, does this mean if we hire another person, are we going to eliminate overtime? Can you restructure it? Can you hire another intermediate versus a paramedic. Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. asking, what I'm asking you to do is yeah. to help us help figure out is there is there anything create more creative in the staffing? Is there anything that we I mean if you're talking about Greenfield and Montague, instead of paying people overtime to handle this, this is coming down. Is this the time to hand you know, should we be hiring actually hiring another person? Right. What I guess what we're asking you, Zach, is you are you are the person in charge of this. So if you if we are all of our all of our towns are very constrained. There's absolutely none of us that have any extra money laying around. We've had years of all this. I mean, certainly since 2008 and nine, we've been desperate. So we, you know, it's not fun. We're doing budgeting year round. So is there anything that can be done differently that would generate more money, have more staff, whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. asking you to be creative. And yeah. that was what I wasn't asking for. And then what What if we don't have any money? I mean, yeah, if right. our choices are that we're, we're not making it, mm -hmm. 
But to that point, Carol, like you're saying, that you know, if you have a, a particular person that's making twenty-five dollars an hour, and he's working twenty hours overtime, mm -hmm. that's nearly thirty-five dollars or more yeah. an hour. Where you could have a clerk that you could probably hire, you know, for twenty hours a week and pay her fifteen dollars an hour and do that. Sure. And no, save a well, boatload of money. What's you, that? you want somebody competent. So but let's, I, let's I, not so say fifteen. I, I, yeah, 20, I, get, I, I appreciate 20, the point. Yeah, yeah, I, I got you. Um, Right, and so, right, I, I mean, if the overtime discussion is one of, there are many reasons for overtime. One of them is these duties that are being delegated out because we don't have that clerical staff. I mean, that's one reason um, why why we see some of that. And um, we've had this conversation before about, I mean, I think there was like $120,000 in overtime, you know, so that, that's it's pretty high. But, you know, so yeah. I don't know, and, you know, I don't want to get involved with that, but, you know, that's yeah. an area that, you know, Maybe you should scrutinize it. Yeah, I, the, we can get into a long discussion about why you see a lot of overtime in public safety. Um, but, 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 and you and know, that right, we're right not trying we to. I, I think they're just asking to look at the budget. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of that course. Talk, then stop. Yeah. No one say a word. <laughs> no, no one <laughs> say one more word. Right? It's they're asking the to look at. We're, and, and, and Zach, yeah. but sometimes you can, we can give reasons why not. But they're saying, look, look at it. And if, and if you want them to keep giving you examples, keep talking, because they'll keep giving you examples. But right now, they're asking you to come up with a thing, so stop talking. Anything else to come before the board tonight? I just want to be clear that it's only half the budget. The, the, mm, no, it's a percentage. So it's. OK. If it was going to town asking what, Bruce, what were, you, what were you saying? What were you, what were you we're, trying to mean? Bruce, town we're the fiscal Deerfield, agent. I am, we're but the then asking agent. for a 5% reduction in the total budget. Yes. I'm, you know, I'm, all the towns would have to agree to that, wouldn't they? I, we're the fiscal agent. Both, but other and I was trying to be exactly. proactive in saying that we all have potentially Ooh. I know someone in a that you're not I'm rolling sorry. in the dough. I, no, I, I, would, I would say I would think that Deerfield probably wrote a letter and, and said the same thing to their school department. They we did. did. We did. Yeah. And they said the same thing to Frontier. They right. just, yes. And, 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 and those are all, and, that, and that's good. It, we shouldn't be afraid to look at how we operate, right? Really? I think that's all, that, that's all, they're, at, that's all they're asking. But also, what is important here, and people need to understand, we need to know to get a handle on the ramifications because we have got to start advocating that we can't take cut and move away because we are already to the bare bones. And that's part of the information that we're collecting out of this information. Okay? Oh, yeah. I mean, because we need to. Thanks ask for the explanation. <laughs> <laughs> next next oh, motion to adjourn. Third Thursday at 6 p.m., not 7 p.m. 6 p.m., thank you. Yeah. Not the fourth Thursday at 7 p.m. Motion. Thursday is the 29th. Thank you.